Welcome to a brand new episode of The Focus Bee Show. And today I'm very honored to be here with Davonu Banks. Davonu is a marketing and advertising expert. He has over 20 years of experience in this field. He's a founder of Envision Brand Marketing and has provided award-winning marketing solutions for small, medium, and Fortune 500 companies. Thank you so much for joining the show today, Davonu. Thank you, Katie. I'm honored to be on your show and um, I look forward to uh, the show as well. Fantastic. Last week, we spoke a bit off air about your journey and you have a fascinating journey. I'm wondering, could you share a bit with the audience how Envision Brand Marketing was born? Yes, absolutely. Uh, after being in the uh, corporate industry for over uh, you know, 15 years, years and being in marketing and advertising, like you said, for, for over 20 years, um, I went through this journey of, of uh, experiencing uh, marketing in different facets, uh, working at different agencies, uh, working in different capacities uh, within each agency, uh, and moving up the ladder at the same time. And so working on different uh, clients uh, across the board, uh, from IT to uh, automotive, to you know, food and beverage, hospitality. I mean, it, it was endless and a lot of it was purposely driven because I wanted to have a lot of experience within my portfolio uh, so that I could make choices as I moved up the ladder to um, engage in different opportunities uh, that came before me. So, um, you know, different opportunities came, I took advantage of them and as I did, uh, I started consulting as well on the side, which, you know, just came out of people asking me questions and having marketing questions. And, and I said, you know, I'd be happy to help and started consulting and really enjoyed that one-on-one -on -one, um, opportunity. And then as I was moving to look for a director of marketing or CMO type of opportunity, everything was kind of jack of all trades. And so I, I really wanted to focus on brand strategy and marketing strategy because within my portfolio of, of work, um, that's really what I enjoyed doing and, and, and just really sparked my interest. It got my juices flowing. And so I really wanted to focus on that. And once I did, um, I wanted to do that for small and medium sized businesses. And that's where Envision uh, came to, to fruition. And um, I said, you know, there's this opportunity to help small and medium sized businesses that don't get the same type of attention that large fortune 500 and large agencies can provide to fortune 500 companies. So um, I created this model called dream purpose action that not only allowed me to help solve a lot of small and medium sized business uh, issues as far as marketing strategy and brand strategy, but also guided them through and, and taught them how to um, understand the, the whole spectrum of marketing as it pertains to their business and building them up in a way that helps them reach their mission, their vision, and their goals. Amazing. And I love how organic it all sounds. It feels like you just started doing consulting on the side. You had a few people coming to you and you were just helping them out and it sort of organically built itself. I'm wondering in this sort of transition period when you went from more the corporate world where you're gathering lots of opportunities and experience and then when you went towards having your own business, did, were there any fears that sort of crept up along the way? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Want to you share know. with the audience? Because I think the people listening either have their own business and can identify with it, or maybe they're about to take the leap. So it's always fascinating to hear what sort of fears people have along the way. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it's one of those things where the, the comfort of being within an organization, um, you know, you can't, you can't replace that in entrepreneur world because entrepreneur world is all about taking risks, um, experiencing challenges and getting through those challenges. But I have a, a personality that loves change, that loves challenges. I'm a competitive person. So that really um, sparked my interest as I started to do consulting on the side. And so, you know, some of the, the fears that I had were, am I gonna make it? You know, they talk about businesses you know, if you, your business doesn't survive over the first two years, then you're probably not going to make it, right? So, so 
you know, that was kind of my landmark in terms of like, you know, can I get um, clients? Can I get brand partners to, to be um, sustainable uh, over a two year period? And if I can get to that point, then I've, I, I, I've, I've reached my goal first milestone and, and I can move forward. Right. So I would say, you know, when you have those fears, create milestones um, and, and just attack each milestone one at a time, you know, and that's, that's what helped me get through, um, you know, those fears, um, you know, each, each time I had, you know, hesitations, partnering with people uh, and, and having trust that, you know, this partner is going to follow through on what they promised. Um, and then, you know, continuing to learn as you go, you know, is, is, is the key is knowing that you don't have to have it all together in order to jump into that entrepreneurship. And, and, you know, that's what I'm glad I didn't feel like I had to do is have it all, all the answers. Right. Yes. I don't think anyone has all the answers. So <laughs> you, you shared three essential tips here. The fact of setting milestones, having great partnerships and continuously learning. I want to come back to that setting milestones because a lot of entrepreneurs are ambitious like yourself or maybe competitive and driven. They also like maybe exciting new projects and change of variety. But what I know has happened with me, some of my clients, a lot of people I know, is we set two ambitious milestones. So I'm wondering what you do when you don't reach your milestones. Let's say you fix yourself an income or number of clients or whatever it is within the next six months or year and you don't reach it. Has this happened to you or something similar? And how have you dealt with this? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I experienced it in my corporate career as well. It's like I had a milestone. I was going to reach this certain job or this certain um, uh, salary level or whatever the case may be. And, and when you don't, um, my, my thought process is it, it didn't happen in that time period, but it can still happen. And so I'm going to keep pushing forward. You know, I could, I could wallow in the fact that I didn't reach my milestone or I could say, you know what? I'm going to keep pushing forward because I know I'm going to reach it. It's not, it's, you know, you know, maybe I said it for six months, maybe I said it for a year. Um, but I know that I'm going to reach it. And in my first year as an entrepreneur, I set a certain number of clients and a certain level uh, of income. And I reached that milestone, but year two, I didn't reach that milestone the same at the same speed. Right. So I'm like, okay, that's okay. I did it the first time. I know that it's, uh, attainable. So I'm going to continue to move forward and push forward and, and lo and behold, it, it, it continues to grow. So I love that perseverance commitment to sort of ongoing motivation. I'm wondering what gave you that sort of certainty, that sort of fuel that if you, you haven't achieved it yet, you know that you will at some point because you need to have this sort of certainty that it's still going to happen even if you haven't made it yet. And I know a lot of people struggle with confidence or self-doubt and they think, well, if I haven't made it yet, maybe I never will. So you don't seem to have this approach, but is there any thought pattern or anything that you cling on to, to give you this sort of faith in yourself and in the process that it will actually work out? Absolutely. I, you know, you know, I, I, I have a internal, you know, I take it back to my childhood, obviously my parents, obviously, you know, instilled that in me, um, as a, as a child to, you know, you, you can do anything that you put your mind to, right. You know, the, the, a lot of people hear that, uh, the question is, do you believe what, what people are telling you? Right. And, and can you, uh, put that into practice? And so, you know, I played a lot of sports that helped, um, you know, I always set goals, you know, when I was in school to get certain grades, my parents did as well. And so, you know, I remember getting, uh, you know, uh, a BM, wanting this BMX uh, bike in, in the eighth grade. And my parents said, well, if you accomplish these uh, uh, grades, uh, then we'll get you this BMX bike. And, you know, that set it off, you know what I mean? In terms of just like, wow, I, I, I can do this. You know what I mean? And so I, um, I worked hard and by the end of the, the, the semester, I had, you know, reached that, that goal that they had put in front of me and was able to get that BMX bike. And so I, I applied that to my, my, my sports. I applied it to my grades. I applied it to life. Um, you know, I, and I'm also, you know, very, um, you know, 
God is very important to me as well. And so, you know, all things are possible uh, through th through Christ that strengthens me, it, you know? And so I live by that verse. Uh, I also have a, a, a life verse, uh, Colossians uh, 3.23, and, and that, you know, I'm not working for man, I'm working for him. And so that inspires me to push forward in everything that I do as well. Wonderful. So connecting with that sort of higher purpose in your case is faith related, but also for people who aren't necessarily religious, there are ways to connect with the higher purpose, Absolutely. the vision, yeah. the mission. Maybe we can go now to your uh, sort of slogan or principle, dream, purpose, action, because I feel this is very related with what we're saying right now. Do you want to share a few words around how you came up with this concept, what it means for you? And yes, tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it was, um, you know, it's, it was interesting. You know, I was thinking about my, my, my company name. I was thinking about, you know, and once I came up with Envision, and I don't know if you see in the logo behind me, um, you know, you can see the target um, that is created through the line and, and, and the, the two, two lines in, 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 in the target there uh, in Envision. And so having uh, your eye on the prize and, and focusing and continuing to move forward is just part of the brand, right? And so dream came to, to me as the brand strategy. What is the brand, right? And then purpose, uh, you know, why do you do what you do? And who are you going after? And then action, let's, let's do this. How are we going to do it? And where are we going to, to, to you know, take, take, take action, right? And so those things just really inspired me. Those words really inspired me. And when I put them together, I was just like, this is not only my company mission and vision, but it's also my life mission. And that's where it came from is, is just thinking about having a dream, having a purpose, and putting it into action. Amazing. It's such an inspiring so three words. I love it. I'm wondering, do you feel that purpose is the one where most people struggle with or dream? Is there one in particular that you feel most people with their own business actually struggle to put in place? I believe the dream is something that everybody easily comes up with, like you fantasize or think about your dream, but the, the phase within Envision for dream is more than just coming up with the idea. And I think that's where people struggle. People come up with the idea and then they want to move right to action. Mm. And, and it, it's really hard. And so, yeah, between dream and purpose, I think is the real struggle. Action is easy for everyone I've found, even in the corporate world, creating those tactics and coming up with those ideas, those, those two always came first. It was really bringing the why behind it. People don't ever ask, okay, why am I doing it? Do I, you know, do I have any reason or why I really want to do this? Who am I impacting? And is it going to create some type of change, you know, or am I just doing this because I have a great idea and really don't know how to bring it to fruition. And so I really focus in that first phase on creating that foundation, understanding who you are and what you're doing as a brand to impact the world and the community that you're targeting, right? So, and then we get a little bit deeper in the purpose, um, purpose phase. I love this. I think it's one of the reasons why Simon Sinek start with why was so popular because yes. so many people don't start with why so many people don't ask themselves why they're doing it. And that leads to essential problems later on because they get stuck or maybe they lose their motivation or maybe they have a midlife crisis where this in the corporate world or having your own business. Some people sometimes feel, oh, if I have my own business and I do what I want, then I have the purpose. But people struggle with purpose in all areas, whether it's they're freelancers, consultants, have business owners or in the corporate world. So I think this is such a valid and essential point for people to take away, really know your why and probably re revise it. So do you feel that people review it on a six month basis, yearly basis? Or how do you feel the process is around this? Yeah, I think it's important uh, to know your why. Um, I think what 
can be revised is going back. I always tell people to go back to your mission and your vision, right? And I think that's where people really miss is some people come up with their mission and vision and, you know, their values, which is also vitally important because, you know, as you grow, you want to maintain those values. But I think people um, create them and then they post them on a, a website or they post them on, in their office and they just become words, right? As opposed to, okay, why are we doing this? And does it go back to fulfilling our mission, our vision? And does it, is it within the values that we created? Because th that's where people get off course. They create new services or products for no apparent reason. I mean, this is a great, um, this time right now is a great opportunity to do that because COVID um, has caused people to pivot, right? And so if you're not looking back at your mission, your vision and your, and your values to say, is this the right way to pivot? Then, you know, answering that why is, is, is irrelevant at that point because you're not even, you know, sticking with your foundation. You're, 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 you're diverting from it. And maybe you do have to divert, but then you need to reevaluate your mission and your vision and then answer the why and say, why am I doing this? Why am I changing uh, my mission and my vision? Why am I um, pivoting in this direction? Is this really going to help my business grow um, in the, with the change in the, in the environment and the culture and, and with COVID? Absolutely. I think nowadays it's really the best time for reflection and introspection and to look into these things. And as the world is changing around us, adapting our own business for people who have their own business is essential. I'm really curious as to why that you, that you feel the mission and vision come before the why, because in my world or my point of view, they were all sort of the three things I work on simultaneously. So I would look at you know, what, what's my missions, why am I doing it, and what's my vision, where I want to go. But it seems to me that you seem to begin with mission and vision and then look into the why. Could you explain a bit why you feel this is the most efficient or interesting way to do it? Yeah, I've broken down the dream, purpose, and action into who, why, and how, right? So to, to break it down even simpler for folks, because, you know, those words can be lofty, right? Um, and so the reason I start with, with, with the who is because if you don't know who you are, and this, this goes to a personal level too, if you don't know who you are, how are you going to answer the question why you're doing something, right? So, so it, it's a very important to, to, to solidify the who and understanding your foundation and where you come from, where your, 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 your moral standards, who do you believe in? You know, is, is, do you believe in a higher power? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in something else? Do you believe in yourself? All of those things are important in establishing uh, a company as well. And so you have to know who you are as a company, who you are as a brand in order to move forward and answer that question why. And so that's why I think uh, it's important to, to, to understand that step first and create that foundation before you get to the why. Wonderful. I wonder, could you share a few tips and tools and tricks for people to help them define their mission and vision and their why? Obviously, we're not going to be able to go super in depth, but if you have just one or two tools, people are listening, they realize they haven't really figured it out. If they could write something down or a brief question or something that can help them start digging in that direction. Yeah. Um... You know, I take people through exercise, specific exercises, but in, in terms of just starting out, most people, again, start with that idea, that dream, right? Um, back, back that dream up and, and say, is this a dream that I've come up with that represents something that I believe in and that I want to um, do to change or bring change into a certain area, whether it's a service, a product, um, you know, answer that question and, 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 and understand, you know, the idea isn't just an idea. It's, it's, it's a part of you. It should be something that inspires you, that gets you up in the morning and says, hey, this is how I want to change the world. It, it, not, this is, you know, 
this is the reason I want to make money, right? Like this is how I'm going to make, become a millionaire. If, if, if that's your, your motivation, not that that's a, a bad motivation, wanting to make money is not a bad motivation. That's a great motivation, but it shouldn't be the only reason and it shouldn't be the isolated reason around your idea because nine times out of 10, that, you, that idea is not going to come to fruition because all you're focused is on money. Right. And, and you lose focus when it's time to have that purpose in action because all you're thinking about is money, 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 and you're not putting forth that right strategy that helps you that game plan that helps you get to the goal, you know? So that's, that's, that's what I do. I, I focus on, you know, is this, getting me up in the morning is this inspiring me to, to create change i love this i think what you say about money is so true it's neither the ultimate motivation that's great for people nor this horrible thing that we should totally ignore it's just that if that's the only source of motivation it probably won't work out and the thing is and i think that's the worst thing if it does work out a lot of the time people are actually depressed so a lot of the time, if the only reason they have a business or this plan or this vision, whether again, it's in the corporate world or people having their own business, and money is the only source of motivation. When they do become millionaires or whatever number they're aiming for, they actually become depressed. Someone said this on a podcast interview I had with him, Phil Pelusha, for people who want to check out this interview I did with him a few months ago, but also Tony Robbins coaches billionaires who are unfulfilled. They're billionaires, but what happened? They only aim for the money. If they were aiming for balanced and healthy relationships and feeling fulfilled every day and they had purpose and contribution and they were looking at money too, again, it's not to just push it aside, but if they were looking at the whole picture, then, you know, maybe they wouldn't need Tony Robbins. I don't know. <laughs> absolutely, Katie. I, I absolutely agree with you 100% that, that, you know, you can start with purpose. You could start with action and be very successful. You could, you could, you could, start with money and be very successful. I'm not saying my model is the end all be all. And, you know, there isn't another way to get to the goal. But I think at some point, you're going to come back to your dream, you're going to come back to your why, and try and figure out, is this really what I wanted to do? I, I'm fulfilled from a material standpoint, but am I fulfilled Holy, like you were saying, the big picture, looking at all aspects of, uh, of your uh, company or your brand or your, or your, uh, your personal being, you know, am I fulfilling um, the gifts that I've been given to change, help change and impact uh, the world or the community that I'm, a, I'm in? And, and I think that's when people are, are, are truly fulfilled in their, in their, their, their vocation and, and in life. What I'm realizing here through this conversation is it also comes down to how we define successful. And in today's society, success is often linked to, you know, income, money, status. And if already societally we had a more balanced view of success, it would maybe not encourage people to chase so much just the money and status. If maybe we revised this vision of success, which I think we are. I think well-being is more and more incorporated in and the importance of relationship. I think people are realizing, okay, money and financial gain is important, but loads of people aren't happy just through this. I think it is more and more common. So I feel redefining success is important. How would you define success? What is for you someone who is really truly leading a successful life, not just by society, but in your eyes? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Katie. I think I think you hit the nail on the head as far as what success. Everybody has their own an interpretation of success, and you know, but we can see that in society that if your ultimate goal is just material or external, um, at the end of the road, you don't feel fulfilled, and and something is always missing and you're constantly searching for it and trying to strive for that, that missing, that's missing piece. And, and when you do that, um, again, you have to go back to the dream. You have to go back to the purpose and you end up, you know, uh, spiraling out of, out of control and trying to figure it out. 
um, why am I not fulfilled? I'm making millions or billions of dollars and I'm not fulfilled. Um, or I have all the toys and trinkets, boats and cars and houses, and I'm still not fulfilled. We see it in, you know, with celebrities, athletes, billionaires who are in the financial uh, realm. We've seen it. And it just, it, it's not fulfilling. And so my definition of success is, again, going back to um, what do you believe in? You know, what is your foundation? Um, and understanding who you are really helps you bring clarity to, um, and what gifts do you have that no one else has? Everybody's unique and everybody has a, something to contribute to the world that can help change and impact lives. And so if you can begin to um, clarify that on some level, uh, and again, create those milestones and say, I'm gonna use this gift to help people um, do this. Um, I'm gonna use this idea or product or service to help people do this. And I think more and more people are finding, especially during this COVID time that, that um, you know, what's more important in life, you know? I think we found out that our families are way more important because we've spent more time with them. Um, I think we found out that, you know, time is much more precious to us. That's the, the biggest commodity in, in, in our world today is time. You know, how many people want to give up time? It's easy to, you know, donate money. It's easy to, um, you know, show up and then leave for something. But to really donate your time um, and give you're all to something that you believe in is, is, is where I think success starts to uh, come to fruition and, and begins to um, look at that bigger picture that we were talking at the big, at the beginning and, and saying life is more than just obtaining things. It's, it's, it's about helping others and changing uh, the way we, we um, move through this, uh, this journey of life. Right. And, you know, we can, you know, I don't want to get too high and pie about it, but in general, I think if if you're fulfilling um, others, I think you begin to be fulfilled. I love this. I think it's just a perfect note to finish on. I could add a few more questions, but I think that's just <laughs> such a lovely note. I mean, I'm just going to leave it at this. It's flown by. It's been so much fun, Devon. You thank you so much for joining the show and for sharing all of these insights. It's really inspired me and I know these topics. So I can only imagine that someone that doesn't know this stuff will be blown away. So thank you so much for all of your time. As you were saying, extremely precious and for your insight. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. It's a pleasure being on the show and, and um, much success to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.